What's up, YouTube? Welcome to, um, I guess, a gear review slash just kind of like what I bring to the skate park. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go over everything from old man pads to my skates, uh, to what I listen to, to what I film with. Uh, so stick around, let's get this. So every time I go to the park, I always bring one of two skates, uh, both being Rossi M12 boots. Um, the first pair I bring usually, actually the main park pair, if I'm skating more transition, bulls, vert, coping, that kind of stuff, uh, this is gonna be my skate of choice. This skate right here is awesome because um, basically it's just got the wish frame on it. And if you don't know what the wish frame is, it allows for a bigger wheel setup flat. Um, so you get the speed uh, as well as a giant H block right here. So this H block right here really helps me against sticking on these two wheels uh, on ledges, on coping for like top sides, back sides. It just makes it really nice to have a giant H block area. Other than that, what I'm rocking the setup is, these are the undercover uh, 72 millimeter, or used to be. Um, these are ground controls, and I think they're 61 or 62 to complete the flat setup. And you can find this at the Wish website for the, I think it's called full stack uh, flat setup. But anyway, so let's move up the boot. After that, uh, all this is stock, sole plate, um, boot, buckles, all stock. This is the best buckle in the world, the memory buckle. If you haven't heard of that, you set it once and it's the easiest thing to get on and off. Um, the most expensive part of this whole entire setup uh, is this liner, the Intuition liners. So um, reason why I, I wear these um, is because how narrow the skate is and how, how short it is. So I feel that pressure on top and on the sides. Um, I don't know, this is like my favorite boot basically just because it is so uh, low volume uh, and narrow, um, especially with an intuition liner in it. It just, it feels like a piece of me. It's so lightweight, it's so tight, it's, it's awesome. Only downside I have with it, if you can see here, the sole plate is very narrow. Um, I barely have anything on my a negative sole plate, which, you know, I've never been good at negative grinds anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the regular side sole plate isn't that big either. So in order to get um, uh, full boot down on my Royales, especially with how tall this frame is, um, I really have to get sideways to sit on both the frame and the boot instead of having just a little bit more so it's not so breaking my ankle to get Royale. That's really the only, well that and top sides because it's very similar, you have to get, really push your boot over and then because you, you still don't have much to catch without slipping off. So that's really the only downside to this setup that I have. Um, I've, I've learned to get around it and work around it I really, really enjoy this setup. Uh, I wish Rossi's put out like a wider sole plate option for these boots, but you know, such is life. So that's, that's this is one pair that I skate, mostly skate park in this one. And then my other set of skates that I, I, I rock, usually I rock these um, more on a plaza style park or uh, something that's more just a grinder blader setup. Um, and these are also the M12s. Uh, these M12s are, uh, were my first pair of M12s. Um, love them to death. Uh, let's start from the bottom. I got the Caltech frames on them. Hate these frames on um, coping because I feel like they grab um, and they slow down, which kind of sucks. But everywhere else, they're awesome. Um, I'm riding flat 60. 60s, I believe they're, no, 62 ground controls. Uh, same thing, it's in the, in the middle of those, uh, my other skates. Um, and, you know, they are awesome. I love how flat, I love the flat setup. Um, I did skate anti-rocker for a while, and I just, 
I just, I like the feeling of inline skating when you can actually carve and turn and not have to pick up your feet and turn. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, to each their own, but that's what I like. The reason I have these set up uh, without a wish frame is because I like the shorter um, base of boot to ground ratio. That way, with having such a sh uh, narrow sole plate right here, I can really get down on grinds um, a lot easier. Like this is nothing to get Royale topside. Um, so this is really more of my grinder blader setup. Um, still rocking the M12s because I still have found another boot that I like better that fits better, I guess. It's not a better boot, it's just light and it fits great. So um, that's what I like. How do I carry my skates to the park? One little thing I love to use, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever home improvement store around you. I think these things are like two, three bucks a piece maybe. They're these oversized carabiners. And these things are awesome because you just pop it open, slip slip it on the, the um, little loop on the liners, pick up your, your skates and you're out. And it's 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 just much better than carrying, squeezing the skates together, is carrying one, one arm in each, or one skate in each arm. Um, I just highly recommend an oversized carabiner for carrying your skates around. Uh, I know they do sell these things um, on skate places. Uh, they are a bit more expensive, but they do have a little kind of cushy handle in this area right here. I don't know, I don't think I need that. So anyway, awesome to just find this for cheap at the uh, hardware store. So uh, this next section is gonna be all about how I protect myself when I skate. Um, and this is pretty much every time I go skating, this is what I wear, period. Uh, I am, call me a wuss, uh, but I have a kid and a house and I have to basically take care of myself the most that I can in an extreme sport like inline skating. But uh, starting from the, the feet to the, the head, um, the first thing I rock are these G-form shin knee pads. These things are a lifesaver. Um, I wish they came down maybe another inch or two uh, on the shin because there's just a little area right above the boot and the shin that I have hit a few times with these on and it sucks. Um, but that being said, not having to have a shin guard and a knee pad on, this is awesome. I highly recommend it. They are overpriced, um, but I guess the technology is uh, the fact that they harden up on impact. So once you hit them really hard, like it's really uh, squishy and flexible, but they harden up on impact. So really cool. Still think they're way overpriced, but shout out to G-Form for, for making these. I've had these for over a year now and they're holding up great. I wear these under my jeans when I skate. So this, you know, rubbery stuff doesn't get all ripped up. Uh, yeah, G-Form. Uh, next thing I wear. This is the most important thing, uh, I think, other than like a helmet um, for me, uh, is the Triple Eight Bum Savers. These things are great. I went through about four or five, no, not that, maybe three or four of these so far uh, over the course of the last two years. Um, you know, you get about six months if you're skating hard in them. Um, I wear them under my pants all the time, so you know, it helps alleviate these ripped holes and stuff, but they do rip over time because your pants rip and you start ripping through to these two. But they hold up really well. They save your uh, hips, they save your tailbone. Um, they're just, they're awesome. After you get used to them, you don't even notice they're on. Downside to them when you wear them under uh, stuff like jeans, they are very hot. Um, they don't breathe super well under jeans. Nothing really does under jeans. Um, it's nothing against this. this, is a great material, it is breathable, but they do uh, get a bit sweaty and gross. Uh, my wife tells me all the time how gross these are when I take them off after skating. But uh, other than that, highly, highly, highly recommend these. Second thing you get after a helmet. So the next thing up I guess would be my hands. Um, I work with my hands. Um, I am a graphic designer by trade, photographer, videographer. I mean, I just make websites and videos and photos and stuff. So um, I'm in front of the computer a lot. I shoot the camera a lot. 
I need to protect my hands and my wrists. So these currently that I'm rocking are the rollerblade. Don't know which ones they are. I got them at Goodwill for like two dollars, brand basically brand new. Um, they're just your basic, basic uh, wrist guard. Um, I think any wrist guards really work. They're all gonna get trashed. Uh, I wouldn't spend a bunch of money on them. Just get something to put over your hand and your wrist that's gonna protect it from impact and sliding. So you just, I don't know, it's nice to have. You don't look awesome, but I mean, at the end of the day, I'd rather have my hands and my wrist than looking that much cooler at a skate park. That's just my personal preference. So yeah, I think that's all about these. It's pretty, pretty basic, simple stuff. Oh, one thing to say, all, I mean, I've tried so many different brands. I've tried uh, the AAA ones, Rollerblade, the Enui, um, Enui, Enui, well, how do you say it? Uh, yeah, I think that's some other weird name brand. Um, I just literally try to go thrifting for these things and find them now because I just tear them apart. I tear them to pieces so fast. They're like the fastest thing that gets cycled out of my kit. So there you go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about are the elbows. The only reason I wear them now um, is because of my wife. Uh, she got tired of me going to the skate park and every time I came home, um, I would have bloody elbows. Uh, not every time, but you know, sometimes you fall, you just get a scrape, it's like whatever. But the problem to her is uh, we have white bed sheets and she got tired of um, getting blood stains all over white bed sheets. Uh, so basically I wear elbow pads now because of my wife, but that's all right. The elbow pads that I do, I do wear um, are the triple eight. Um, not sure that the the name of them or the the model, um, but there's triple eight simple elbow pads, um, and they are super low profile. Um, they flex really well. Um, they aren't super restrictive. They're a little restrictive, but not not too bad. The the cover, or sorry, the pad part, um, it isn't too thick. It's really just to save your skin and a little bit of impact. They don't have a hard shell, so this might get torn up pretty fast, but they are cheap, so not a big deal. Uh, I've had these for a while. Um, I've fallen on quite a few times, and they really don't look all too uh, messed up. Uh, I'm really actually quite surprised with this, um, this material. If you want them, I think these are some, some decent ones. They're cheap and they work, they last for a while. So yeah, uh, cover your elbows up if you want. There you go. All right, so the next thing I have um, is probably one of my most important things for me. You'll see me rocking in all of my skate videos when I'm at a park uh, or just doing aggressive skating, period. Um, and that is my shoulder brace. It is a very custom shoulder brace that I've created. Uh, basically, it's just a modded shoulder brace to my my liking. It's it's reinforced, uh, it's strong. It has a nice Velcro, super, super heavy duty Velcro strap that I had my mother uh, sew on for me. Works very well, all you just slip it on, put it around yourself, boom, ready to go. And what that does is it stops me from being able uh, to, when I fall, uh, putting my arm out and my body going one way, my arm going the other, and my shoulder gets dislocated. Uh, as you can see, I can't go anywhere from there. Yes, it does suck, but uh, you get used to it, and I'd rather be doing that than dislocating my shoulder, you know, every few times I skate. Uh, I don't wear it in my big wheel uh, fitness skating because I'm really not jumping, grinding, or doing anything like trick-wise, so that's why you won't see it me wearing it there. But anytime else, I wear this. All right, we have made our way to the top for pads. The next thing in here is my Triple Eight um, MIPS certified helmet. This thing is a very expensive helmet, <laughs> uh, and it's all because of this right in here. Um, this yellow plasticky thing allows the helmet to slide your head to slide around just ever so slightly inside this helmet as you take an impact. So there's uh, torsional rotation somehow is helping your brain from sliding in different angles as you uh, hit. So uh, apparently that's supposed to help from uh, concussions and, and trauma stuff. I don't know if that's really the truth. Um, it does say it is 
ASTM and CPSC certified. So, I mean, the old helmet I used to rock is also a 888 helmet. It's just the regular helmet was certified for nothing. So, you know, I didn't know what to ask for for Christmas this last Christmas. So I was like, hey, I might as well protect my head the best way possible, even if it is marketing. <laughs> uh, the other thing though with this, this is a little bit bigger than my other 888 helmet. Um, and that is because this foam in here is thicker and much, much harder. There is, the foam in that thing is like a joke. I, I don't know if that would really save my, my head. Um, I have taken a back whipper in this on co concrete and it used to be a much easier to see, but there's like a spot right there. Uh, yeah, I still was seeing stars, but um, I like to believe that this thing uh, definitely helped me uh, more than any other helmet uh, not see as many stars or blackout. So I don't know, I rock it. Uh, I always rock a helmet, even if it's not MIPS certified, just because I feel like, uh, you know, it, it only takes, I mean, uh, blading on the brain set at best, like, and, and he's actually lived through this experience, which sucks. Um, uh, but I really, really think um, it, it's not worth the one time to change your whole life. Not just not skating, uh, either kill you or, you know, not be able to do many things you used to do. Um, it's just, it's just not worth it. So get yourself a helmet, put it on, be safe, uh, enjoy skating for a long time. So the first thing I have is kind of a two-parter. Um, I always bring a phone and uh, that is because one, if you're not skating with people and you don't have a phone and you hurt yourself, you're fucked. So bring a phone. It's, it's just a line of contact for someone to come help you. Um, number two, if you knock yourself out and you're alone, um, there are features on your phones that you can basically have for paramedics. If someone finds you uh, and your phone is around you, they can figure out who you are, all the stuff about you, um, people to contact, etc. So set that up on your phone too. I might even do a whole video about just about that. Um, the other reason I bring my phone uh, is if I don't bring my camera, I just shoot on this. I just shoot on my phone for like Instagram photos or videos, just cl clip, quick little clips of different tricks. Uh, the third reason I bring my phone, I love having it for music. Um, and that brings me to the second thing. Um, I like to rock to music. And when I do, I, I rock these jib, uh, or sorry, um, Skull Candy Jib Wireless, I think is what they're called. Uh, there's little wireless headphones. They're pretty cheap, like 20, 30 bucks. And uh, they work really well. The range is pretty decent on them. Um, I usually keep my phone obviously in my backpack when I'm skating park, just so I don't fall on it. But um, these things can range pretty much a full park, unless it's a huge park, then this might start cutting out. But um, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, one thing I would say if you're rocking headphones in the park, uh, rock it in one ear or rock it low enough so that you can hear people around you. That's, it's just common courtesy um, and can save you and someone else's um, from getting hurt. Uh, one little hack or tip I have for these, um, you do wear them on your neck. And so when they're in like this, um, this little back part as you're spinning around like this and looking can kind of get stuck off the side and then pull on your ear like on this side, as you see. Um, it's a pain in the ass, I hate it. So what I do is when I'm wearing a helmet, or I always wearing a helmet, um, is I'll put my earbuds in and then this back piece right here, um, I'll just basically uh, tape on the back of the helmet just like that. It doesn't look great, but it keeps this heavy thing from getting stuck to one side of your neck and just being a pain in the ass. It just feels more free. So it's basically making a smart helmet. I don't know. I thought it worked and it, I, do, I do it all the time. So that's that. Um, the next thing I bring to a park, uh, always, always, always bring a water bottle. Um, doesn't matter what kind of water bottle you bring, just bring a water bottle because skating drains you of energy and drains you of water and it's super easy to get dehydrated especially under the sun which a lot of skate parks are not a lot of skate parks have uh, open shade like trees hanging over them so you can get dehydrated super fast so just bring a water bottle um yeah it's 
good. It's much better than buying water bottles. All right, so the next thing I bring, um, I'm always, I always have at least two or three tools with me, uh, just in case my, my wheels get loose, my frame gets loose, buckles, whatever else on my skates or my friend's skates get loose. So um, I always rock a longer one, which is, this is the Rossi's um, stock, awesome, my favorite Allen key uh, wrench ever. I always bring this. Uh, in my bag and then I always rock uh, either some kind of a tool like this, this is the rollerblade uh, tool skate tool um, there's a bearing popper on it um, there's a uh, Phillips screwdriver head and then there's the correct size um, Allen key for your wheels um, and then I always have just a backup one so same thing I always bring some kind of tool with me to the park because uh, you know if your stuff is loose and you drop in and you get like one trick in and then all of a sudden your wheel's gonna about to fall off or like your frame's like chattering or something. It just sucks that you have to like go home because what are you gonna do? So here's a controversial topic. Uh, controversial topic. Um, and that is uh, wax. Uh, I always bring a bar of wax. Uh, this is just household um, household paraffin wax, uh, canning, jarring wax. I found it to be one of the best wax uh, products, period. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, it slides well enough. Um, and two, it's cheap as hell. I think it's like five bucks for like four of these things. And this has been used and it's been flattened and melted and stuff. Um, but cheapest wax possible, slides great. Uh, you can find it at any um, grocery store next to like the canning stuff. In Oregon, it really does suck because our coping gets, uh, anything metal gets oxidized and starts rusting very fast. Like we're talking a week or so after a good rain. So um, I just like to have this because I hate showing up to park on my favorite ledge or rail or something just rust and I can't skate it. So great to have uh, wax always on you. Uh, pro tip. Keep it in a, a plastic bag in your in your bag so you don't uh, uh, have a permanent wax sculpture in the bottom of your bag over all your crap uh, once it gets hot too hot and melts all over. All right, so um, how do I carry all this stuff, you might ask? Uh, and my answer to you is a backpack. This is the backpack I use, um, mainly because I'm a photographer, videographer as well, and uh, I already had some packs that I could lend to my skating career. Uh, didn't have to buy a new one. I love this, it's a low pro pack, it's a camera bag, um, but I love it because it's super small, lightweight, and it has and fits pretty much everything I need minus my blades. Um, it's got a front pack, which will carry tools, um, and yeah, basically it's my tools, wax, stuff like that. The main part is like a half part, um, and I carry all my pads and stuff in there. Um, it's got side things for water bottle. Uh, and the cool part about it is on this side, it has an opening just like this. Um, and this is for your camera stuff. So you can keep your camera stuff safe. Um, I always bring my camera. And so I want somewhere safe to, to put it, even if I end up not using it. Um, so yeah, that's why I really enjoy having this kind of backpack. It might not be for you because you might not need the camera and you could use more space for some other thing. But uh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's, it works totally fine. So the last thing I wanna talk about uh, is my camera setup. I do have a photo video background and I do enjoy uh, shooting on, you know, super nice glass, super nice bodies, like nice sturdy tripods, like slider, all sorts of crap, you know, like I love the cinematic look to stuff as anybody would. But I slowly realized that doesn't mean you need to have the best of the best around with you uh, when you're skating or, or shooting skate videos. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is size and portability. I don't like having all this extra weight and size I have to worry about it needs to fit in my small little um, skate bag. Uh, two, usually uh, when you go smaller, you go cheaper and you, um, you're you not as scared if 
one, it gets broken at the skate park, or two, it gets stolen. Uh, yeah, it would suck, but you're out a couple hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars, rather than thousands upon thousands of dollars. You might be wondering the camera I do shoot with. Uh, I always have a description if you want to see. Uh, it's the Sony A6000, um, and I just shoot with the kit lens because I believe uh, it's the smallest, most compact, most versatile setup um, you could probably do. The only downside I have to it uh, would be it has no mic input, so um, you can't put an external microphone on it. But the internal mics, if you're close enough, are halfway decent when you're shooting at the park, so not a big deal. It is super cheap now since all the new uh, A6, A6000 series cameras are out, and the kit lens is super sharp, and it has the range I need to get kind of the tighter uh, uh, cinematic shots and a wider shot, you know, here and there. It gets the job done. Um, so yeah, that's what I use for a camera and lens for all my setups. I, I also roll with a tripod, and the only tripod I use is, I don't know the name of the, uh, the, the series, but it's the hiking slash lightweight, small, compact tripod from Benro. Um, I love Benro because I shoot a lot of Manfrotto, I use a lot of Manfrotto stuff professionally, and I just started using more Benro stuff professionally as well. And I found this one for super cheap, it's super rigid, um, and it's, but it's really small, lightweight, compact. Um, so it just works perfect for this setup. But yeah, that's what I shoot with for, or use for uh, shooting all these 30 and rolling videos. So that's it guys. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Please drop a like, uh, subscribe, do whatever you want. I would love it if you guys commented about anything that I kind of glanced over and you wanted more detail on. I would enjoy it if you told me what was wrong about this video or what you liked about this video. Um, so yeah, until next time, just keep rolling guys.